Ok, quindi io inizierei con il primo intervento. Lo cerco, così ce l'abbiamo lì davanti. Eccolo qua. E il valore delle etichette indipendenti nel mercato musicale globale, in particolare quello europeo, perché uh, Helen Smith e Michelle Lambeau fanno parte con me del direttivo di Impala e quindi sono in particolare uh, interessati ed esperti di, di questa parte del mercato. Ok, Helen and Michelle, thank you very much for being here with us this morning. Um, we are going to uh, ask you to help us understand um, the value of independent labels in the global market, perhaps more specifically in the European market, since that's our, our area of expertise. Um, you know, starting from the biggest challenges that we face at the moment, the ones that we discuss every board meeting when, when we are together, and um, how you see the future. So we're going to start from that and take it, you know, step by step. So Helen, she's uh, executive chair of Impala, executive chair of Impala, and uh, Michelle Lambeau, member of Impala. Okay, thank you very much. I think for, for Impala, the most interesting statistic, the most interesting feature about the music market is one that makes the independent sector very strong, which puts us in a very good position when it comes to um, looking at opportunities in the digital market. And that's the fact that we collectively represent 80% of all new releases. So that's 80% of all the music that digital services need in order to attract music fans. They need that music on their service available. So this, is, this puts us in an exceptional position. It also means that we have to look at how we coordinate and structure ourselves because obviously individually we are fragmented. So that's why obviously associations like PMI are very important and, and then when we look at a regional level we have Impala and then WIN as Mario uh, mentioned earlier too. And of course um, being organized for negotiating in the online world is very important and that's where we have seen the huge difference that Merlin, the organization that negotiates on behalf of independence makes. They are the ones that have totally established the independent sector as a force to be reckoned with in the online market. So they are the ones who negotiate with Spotify, with YouTube, with Deezer, etc. And, and they've had some very interesting um, battles, you could say, in the past few years and some fantastic uh, achievements. They now estimate that they are distributing a million dollars a day to the independent community. Okay, that, that statistic is phenomenal. A million dollars a day is going to the independent community from their online deals. And Michel will talk a lot about that because he's obviously on the, on the Maryland board. Yeah. I just want to stop you there for a second to, um, to underline what you just said about the size of uh, independent labels in the global market. Um, Helen ha sottolineato il fatto che l'80% delle nuove produzioni, delle nuove registrazioni che finiscono sul mercato sono produzioni indipendenti e che questo ci rende la, una forza fondamentale eh, per quanto riguarda i servizi che usano questa musica e che ne hanno bisogno. Uh, Helen ha anche integrato questo pensiero dicendo il nostro problema è che siamo frammentati, quindi è ancora più importante il ruolo delle associazioni come PMI, come UFI uh, e come tutte le altre che fanno parte di Impala e delle etichette che hanno uh, coscienza di questa, di questa situazione, uh, che si... Che si rendano disponibili, che si aggreghino e che cerchino di salvaguardare tutte insieme il loro interesse. Helen faceva riferimento a Merlin che è figlia di queste associazioni di etichette indipendenti che oggi distribuisce, l'avete letto tutti sulla stampa in questi giorni, 365 milioni di dollari l'anno alle etichette indipendenti che sono associate a Merlin. Questo è un milione di dollari al giorno, una classifica, una, è una statistica che fa veramente impressione quando uno ci pensa. And how, how long has Merlin been going? I'm trying to sort of sum up what uh, Helen said in Italian. How long has Merlin been going? Merlin is 2007 and Impala 2000. 2000. 
as, as, at the same time, so it's about 17. No, no, no. Merlin in 2007. 2007, so it's 10 years. Sono dieci, da 10 anni uh, esiste, quindi è un successo pazzesco. Vedo arrivare Mark KitKat. Hi, can you join us? Sorry, traffic in Milan is very bad. Yeah. Didn't miss much, we've just started, so okay. thank you very much for joining us. Sorry I'm late, everyone. <laughs> okay, so I'll uh, hand the microphone back to you, if you like, for yeah. some more. Yeah. Maybe Michelle can give us some more on, on, on Maryland, because they're, they're such an important player. Um. <clears throat> One semantico, primo. Middle sex is just between uomine e femmine. <laughs> um, maybe a bit of history. Um, two, the, the reasons why we, I think it's actually, what I'm going to explain is how we started in Pala and how, and how why we started Merlin. And I think it's also speak about the difference between independent and majors. Um, First of all, I'd like to say that um, I've been doing this, this, post, this, 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 this business since nearly 40 years now. Um, I have lots of friends um, in many, many countries. Most of them, no, not most of them, a lot of them are also working for majors. I, like, um, I've, I have the chance to have a well-paid hobby. Uh, I'm, I love music. And I'm in music, working for music seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and I'm paid for it. It's wonderful. Um, I have lots of friends working with, in major companies which are exactly in the same position as mine. So I think the, the, we have to avoid um, the debate of indies versus majors, ver majors versus indies. We love working together, we try to uh, beat uh, some obstacle like the value gap, for instance, where we have, have all the, obviously the same goal. Uh, the same happens. I hate the, the, the battle sometimes which are opposing publishers and producers. Um, we need writers to be able to record an album. We need, we need artists to be able to sing the songs written by composers and artists. I think it's just one global world, one global economy. And we need to fight for it. Having said that, um, we, I was on the board of a few IFPI countries uh, back in 1999, and came, um, came a, a new very big BIM negotiation, which is about the, the, the rate uh, record companies will pay for mechanical reproduction rights. And um, I've li I had it in Holland, I had it in, 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 in Belgium, and I refused to go to the French meeting because I was fed up. What happens is that we, did, we talked about, uh, at the time, Benelux was a country where, where dance was really a top um, um, style. And, uh, and, and out of that, of course, there were a lot of DJ mixed released on 40, uh, 12, 12 inch 45. So the, the level of mechanical rate for that was just outrageous. So we wanted that. Everyone in Belgium, everyone in Holland, including the majors, the local majors, wanted to have that as a, topic, a top item to discuss in our local negotiation for the BIM contracts. Came someone, no one knew him, he was sent from the sky, arriving in the meeting, coming and saying, this is what you have to talk about. They say, no, 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 we have an agenda. I say, no, 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 no. God have decided it's going to be another agenda. And who was this guy? He was actually mandated by the 10 five majors to tell us what we had to, to say locally. I felt, as a human being, someone was telling me to shut up. And I couldn't defend my rights, which philosophically is something I have problems with. I felt economically it was a big problem. And I felt musically it was actually stopping the, the, the dance, it was one of the obstacles to the development of the, the dance movement. So I called a few friends here and there, including Martin Mills in the UK, Patrick Zelnik in France, which unfortunately had to stop activities because of difficult market conditions. Um, 
And we say we have to do something. And then we talk about many problems we faced. And, you know, we spent a day in Brussels, about five or six of us. And we ended up having a full agenda. And, and we said, no, no, this we have to sort it out. We have to, to do it lo together and, 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 and have an agenda together. So we created Impala. The first reaction of IFPI at the time was, oh, my God, you're against us. I said, no, no, we're not against you. We would like to, to talk about the problems which are, can't be covered by FPI because, because you, you have a conflict of interest. So we would like to say where we're in these and when you're not in these because you're covering in these end majors. Came at the time, within months, Warner wanted to buy EMI. And it was a problem for a lot of companies, including IFPI members, because that concentration, hyper concentration, was a risk to limit our access to market. And it's very good to produce good music, but if you can't put it in shops, then you have a problem. You fucked. So we say we're going to say no. And so we went to local IFPI again, and we talked with local majors, saying, oh, it's too much. And they say, yeah, it's too much. But we can't go with you. We have to say no. We, we have to agree with the merger because our headquarters have, so, have said so. So very rapidly, uh, an impala in an infancy, which was not even existing really, was becoming an, an ardent uh, opponent to the merger. The same happened with Merlin when um, one day, for reasons which are very complex and very long to explain, uh, MTV came back and said, we're not paying your video. I said, yeah, but you made a deal with the five majors. Yes, but they majors, you indie, so we're not paying your video. I said, why? Uh, because. <laughs> we felt it's got the good reasons. We, we want to challenge that. They said, okay. We have a global pot of 600,000 pounds, and you have to divide it amongst yourselves. And when we, when we spend it, we're going to buy videos, and when we have spent a lot of pot, there'll be no more money. I say, no, if we... If we do 30% of your audience, then we want 30% of the money. And we, uh, we went on a campaign. It was extremely violent. It's one of the most violent campaign I, 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 I have been confronted with. Uh, at the start, we were five or six companies. We were 100. It reminds me of Napoleon coming to France. There were 11. They finished by 11,000. It was a bit like that. Um, and ultimately, we, we won. We settled with MTV for three million pounds a year. I probably signed lots of NDA, which stopped me from saying it, but I don't care. Um, I, I think subtlety, flexibility is what making these because the people which are working for major companies have objective, and they've been told from 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 from, from central, from international. This is your objective, and this is what you have to deliver. And very often, even they like something, they're not fully authorized to support it the way they would like to do it. What makes us different is that essentially we have less money, so we need to fight for <laughs> to fight harder to develop our music. Um, I, I'm, uh, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. I think you touched on several important and interesting themes there. Thank you so much.